what? It, last year, we talked about Charlie Brown all Advent long. We talked about how he uh, helped out with the, the Christmas program and how he went and got a tree and he did all these things. And at the very end of it, he said, doesn't anybody know what Christmas is all about? And Linus, little Linus stood up and he says, I know, I know what Christmas is all about. Do you remember what Linus said? Do you remember anything? About, what, did, what did Linus say? Do you remember from either last year or have you seen the program? What did he say? Um, like something to like care about your friends and family or something. Care about your friends and family. Yeah, he read scripture, but that's what it boiled down to. Yeah. Well, here, I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not. Here's what Linus said. <coughs> Good tidings to you and yours, and peace to all mankind. Peace to everybody. That's what Christmas is all about. So being together, having fun together, being nice and kind to each other, loving each other, and sharing everything we have, and peace among us all. Today is the Sunday of peace, okay? In the whole Advent thing, last Sunday was hope. This Sunday is peace. And peace means a whole lot of things. Peace means that we're not fighting with each other. Okay? So that's the big one. But peace is also that we are at, we have, we have calm. Sometimes we get kind of nervous about things. Maybe we're getting ready to do a sporting event, and we, ooh, we get a little nervous. Maybe we have a big test at school. You, I mean, I, 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 gotta, I gotta spell all those words, or I gotta remember all those facts and figures, and we get a little nervous. Peace is when you're calm, and everything is good with the world. And that's what su this Sunday is all about. No matter how much we have anxiety, I, I know it's a big word, maybe we have fears, we're scared of something, whatever, but peace is when we are okay. And that's what God wants us to be. God wants us to be okay. Think that's okay? I think that's okay. Well, if the rest of us that aren't going to Children's Church are able and would like to stand and do a little singing. Uh, I believe the words are going to be on the screen or you can <laughs> join us on page 234 in the hymnal for O Come All You Faithful. <laughs>
You may be seated. <laughs> Good prayers all. Oh wait. Uh, let's do let there be peace on earth. You may be seated to sing this also. I felt like y'all look tired. It's been a rough weekend, so you don't just stay seated, okay? Right. We're going to do let there be peace on earth. Thanks for three more. As we come to the second Sunday in Advent, we first of all look back to the first, and we light the candle of hope. We have hope in Christ Jesus, hope in everlasting life, hope in God. But this Sunday is the Sunday of peace, the second Sunday of Advent. At this season of sparkle and bright unfolds around us, the silent prayers of peace lie like stars hidden in a clouded night. May we inspire the world with peace. May we touch it to our lives that in every place of stress, frustration, or fear, we might feel the presence of peace easing our hearts and transforming our lives. And may we share the healing power with our children that they might become the inspiration through which peace makes its way to a yet dreamt of world. Let us light this second candle of peace and may peace light the world this Christmas. God, you have heard our prayers, what we've mentioned out loud and what we've mentioned in our hearts. You've heard our joys. You've heard our pain. You've heard our fear. You've heard our love. You've heard us. And Lord, we listen. We listen for your word to us, for us, and around us. We listen for your saints to come and speak those words. Lord, we, we pause and we wait. We wait with hope. We wait with peace. We love you, Lord, and we know that you want what is best for us. So in everything we've said, everything we do, everything we are, bless us. Bless us with your spirit and your presence. Lord, there's things that we have in our lives that aren't easy. 
And Lord, you never said that you would take away anything from us, but you did say that you would walk with us through the darkest of hours. So Lord, as we walk together hand in hand, we ask you to guide us, to strengthen us, to pick us up when we fall, and to love us the entire time. We pray these things using the words that Jesus taught his disciples so many years ago when they said, Jesus, how do we pray? And he said, pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Peace. Sometimes it seems like peace is fleeting. Abandoning, evasive. In a world where it seems that everybody is out to get somebody, you got to pick a team. You got to pick a, a, a tribe. You got to you got to pick. You got you got to choose one way or the other. You you, you just can't be friends with everybody. See, I'm here to tell you that you can. You can be friends with everybody. You can welcome the stranger. You can love the neighbor. You can be at peace. You don't have to be in, in war with others just because you think differently, act differently, love differently, whatever it takes. You can be at peace. In the time and world that, that Jesus was born into, there was great tribulation. The occupying Romans wanted it their way. The Jewish sect wanted their laws enforced and, and wanted it their way. The Gentiles, the pagans, worshipped their own gods and wanted it their way. The rich had their own rules. The poor got dumped on. <laughs> Interesting enough, it sounds kind of like today, doesn't it? You can listen to the news and you can hear a whole lot of the same stories. The billionaires getting richer, the working class getting poorer, and everybody at each other's throats. It's almost like the message needs to be given to us again. Linus, what is the meaning of Christmas? The shepherds. The shepherds were out in the fields and they were just minding their own business. Doing what they were told. Tending sheep. Protecting the flock from the enemy, whoever that may be, a bear or lion or whatever. I don't even know what enemies they had in those regions. The stuff that ate sheep, obviously. And lo and behold, angels came and talked to them about peace. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was out in the middle of nowhere with a flock of sheep... In the dark, in the wilderness, and all of a sudden angels appeared and started talking to me, I don't think peace would be on my mind. Fear? Run away? Hide? Cower? Yeah, those are more, more like the words that I would be thinking at the time. But they gave a message of peace. Let's hear these words again, Luke 2, verses 8 to 14. 
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. May God bless us for the hearing and the reading of the Holy Scriptures this morning. What would it take? What would it take for us to find peace? Now, first we would have to face our fears. And that's not comfortable. Because, you know, there, there's only one thing that scares me. And that's fear. We have to face those fears. What are we afraid of? Now, it's different for each one of us because one of us may be terrified of spiders or snakes or something, and the others are like, oh, aren't they cute? Let's play. <laughs> Some of us are scared to death of whatever age we are. Now, some of us think that as we get older, we're scared of being old and we're scared of... But I'm here to tell you, I have talked to school-age kids, little littles, and they're terrified of being the age that they are because of peer pressure and pressures of school and testing <laughs> and all that goes along with it. The anxiety levels are so extremely high, even at a young age. And so age fear encompasses all the way, well, Nicholas doesn't look like he's too afraid of anything. <laughs> but you know, sometimes that kicks in. And we're afraid at pretty much every level. Maybe it's employment fear. I know folks that are changing jobs. I know folks that are getting ready to retire. I know folks that are, are just in transition. And the fear of change has gripped him. As I mentioned, in Jesus' day, there was great turmoil. And the people were afraid. They were afraid to worship as they wanted to for fear of the authorities. They were afraid to be of, of whatever nationality they were because of, again, the authorities and authority figures. And an angel came to the lowest of the low. The shepherds out in the fields and said, Have peace. What would it take for us to have peace? Now, you know, so, so many times we think, Well, right now the United States is not at war with anybody. We're not declared at war right now with, with a. But we sure have a whole lot of people around the world that don't like Americans very much. We're, we're not really at war as far as the church goes. There's not a holy war going on around the globe. We don't have people standing up with, with crosses in one hand and swords in the other as they did in the Renaissance times and, and whatnot and have a whole, if you're not a Protestant, then you're not, if you're not a Catholic, then you're not, if you're not a whatever, we don't really have that right now. But we do still have the bickering and whatnot going on, on between denominations and between individual churches and even amongst ourselves. And we need to be at peace. Somehow, we need to find peace. Maybe it's in our own families. Our, our kids or grandkids or whatever are on a path that we, we don't approve of. 
You know, you, you, you're not going into a, a, a field of study that's going to make you big bucks and, and take you into places, you know, whatever. And the kids are like, well, yeah, but I'm going to be happy. And we're like, well, it doesn't matter if you're happy or not. You need to make big bucks. Well, maybe they're playing the wrong sport. I want you to be in basketball, not football. You'll get hurt in football. Yeah. There's turmoil in our families. Sometimes it's a brother or sister that won't talk to you. Sometimes your mom and dad is, is just being pills. Sometimes, just sometimes, it may be a distant cousin that has those weird thoughts. Ever had that around the Thanksgiving table? That gets an awkward discussion. It happens. It happens more than we want to claim because we think that we're unique. We think that we're alone. We think that we're the only ones that have these issues. Folks, I'm here to tell you that you're not alone. There's issues in every family. There's issues between every neighbor. There's issues even amongst the generations in church, out of church, in school, out of school, in the workplace, out of the workplace. There's stuff going on. And it's okay. It's okay to think differently than others. It's okay to act differently than others. It's okay to be unique in your own unique way. It's not okay to force your actions, views, viewpoints, or things on other people with a heavy hand. That's what causes the war. That's what causes the fight. That's what causes the fear and the unrest. <coughs> and we are called by the Prince of Peace to be at peace with the world. That's sometimes hard to do. In fact, that's always hard to do. We've been taught from a young age, here is how you live. Here is what you think. Here is how you behave. Here is all the ins and outs. And when somebody breaks that tradition, when somebody goes out of those boundaries, when somebody colors outside the lines, it upsets us. It causes us fear and pain. Peace. How do we find that peace? The shepherds were out in the wilderness when anything and everything out there could have attacked and harmed their sheep or harmed them or killed their sheep or killed them. They were living in harm's way. They were out there and, and you know that they were afraid. And then all of a sudden this angel appears and then they were, as scripture says, terrified. But we need to find the peace. Peace in the news itself that a Savior is born, a Messiah, a Savior of the world, a, a, a forgiver of sins, a lover of people. The Christ has been born. That is the message that was given to the shepherds and is given to us today. That's our message. Christ has come. We're given the message of God's blessings. Is life completely and totally without pitfalls? No. Is life without fear? No. Is life without pain? No. But life is always with God's blessings. In one way or another, it, they may be small. In fact, sometimes God's blessings are so small that we miss them. Have you ever looked back on something and said, oh my gosh, God was there. You know, there's a, a country and western song that's unanswered prayers. I think it's George Strait, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it's Garth Brooks. How about Garth Brooks? What else could it? You know, I don't listen to the country. Thank you. So Garth Brooks, yes, I, I knew that. Just uh, uh, testing the congregation here. I don't know. How about Garth Brooks has this song called Unanswered Prayers? 
And in that, he was like, in my young days, I was praying for this to happen. I was praying for this, you know, this was the right one, and this was the way I wanted to, and this is what it was. And I prayed to God that that would happen. <coughs> and God answered it by saying, no. And then later on, found out that better was yet to come. Sometimes we need to look at our lives and think, wow, how blessed are we truly? Yeah, we may not have the biggest and brightest and, and most wonderful, the newest car, the biggest house, the, the great big bankroll or whatever. You know, all that's overrated anyway. It causes heart problems and, and cholesterol problems and, and neighborhood problems and whatever. It's a whole lot better to have peace. Peace of mind, peace of heart, peace of soul. It's so much more helpful to be at peace with ourselves internally, with ourselves externally. The shepherds found that peace because they followed the angels and they went to that town. They found that place. They found that manger. They found that baby. Just as the angels had said. And they were overjoyed. And they celebrated that new life. I beg of you. I beg of you in God's name to find peace. Not just this Christmas season. Not just today, the Sunday of peace. But to find peace in your lives. To live in that peace. Are we going to have pain, fears, grief, sorrow, all the stuff that goes along with it? Yeah, we're going to have that along the way. It's life. But in that, in all of that, may we find peace on earth to those on whom God's favor rests. Let's share the good news of peace and let it start with us. Amen. Okay, since I'm pretty sure you're well rested, <laughs> why don't we, if we're able, stand for our closing hymn, Our Fair Name of the Saints? It's on page 240 of your hymnal or on the screen.